So today in Lessons from an Old Quilt, we're gonna look at this vintage fan quilt. And uh, it's a really cool quilt, so let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe and uh, give it that thumbs up. Also, if you wanna be notified of future videos, please hit that bell at the bottom and that will notify you when I upload a video. Today we're gonna look at this fan quilt and it's a really awesome quilt. Uh, it is one that we use in our home and uh, it's just such a bright, fun, light quilt. And I just feel like we all could use a light segment right now with everything heavy going on in the world, right? Uh, so that's why I chose this one. So let's take a closer look at this and see what we can learn from this quilt and the maker. Okay, so let's take a look at this quilt. Uh, the first thing that I think is important to identify is that block. So I can't quite get it on the screen, but I will put an inset picture here of it. It is quite large if you consider this the block, the giant one, okay? But it's actually little blocks, and I'll show you them, that make up the big block. So there's 16 of these little blocks that make it up and they're exactly the same. The maker just turned the blocks to give you this wonderful pattern. Uh, I've researched this pattern a little bit and um, I saw it said snakes trail, which I don't like snakes, so I don't like the name of that. But <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I thought that was interesting that it kind of winds around. Um, you can see here where they put two together. So it kind of looks like this is the block, but it's not. These are actually the blocks these two. Okay, so you can see the line here. And uh, what's neat about this is depending on how you lay these out, it creates a different motif. So if these corners were turned in, you'd have a circle in the middle. Okay, so it would change the entire look of this quilt. And uh, it's a very versatile pattern. It's fun. It's a fun hand pieced pattern that you can even do now. And it's just, um, it comes together so nice and it works really well with scrap quilts. The, the fabrics themselves that make up this quilt are awesome. Uh, they are 1930s, 1940s prints. They're bright, they're incredible. Uh, and I just love how the variations between them, we have lights, darks, but they all stay in that consistent color wave in a way with the brightness. So these are all hand pieced and the blocks put together, they're also hand pieced together. So let's talk a little bit about the quilting. It is hand quilted and uh, it is quilted with this wonderful motif of hearts. And I picked this particular block to really showcase because you can see uh, the marking lines. So this maker marked with pencil, it looks like. And um, this block, or this quilt rather, has been washed many times. So that's never washed out. I never noticed that though until I was doing this video and preparing for this video. So, you know, it's really not a big deal. In fact, I kind of think it's cool that I can see that. Of course, around these fans, they just hand quilted and shadow quilted or um, not quilted in the ditch, but quilted in what they say the neighborhood around them. Uh, but, and they're not marked, but this motif is absolutely marked in pencil. And that's really interesting to me. Uh, it is all hand quilted and it is all hand pieced. I think I mentioned that already. But here's the thing that I think is interesting. When I really started looking at this quilt, I noticed that the piecing on the fans is a little different than the ones that are on, say, the edges of the block and when they were put together. That's interesting to me because I feel like that tells me that these blocks were put together later and by someone else. And um, I, there's a few clues. This is one of them that tells me that. Another thing that tells me that this was put together later and these blocks were something maybe they inherited or found at a flea market or something like that is the batting. So this is a very puffy batting. And you can see it here if I show you the other side. It's got a puff to it and it feels like a polyester. Now I can't peek inside because there's no holes, but I think it is a polyester, which would tell me it, it was made later on. There are a few stains, uh, but they're minor and overall the quilt is just spectacular and I love it. Um, so let's take a minute and look at the backing. So I love this motif because you can see all the beautiful quilting on the back. So the back is just as nice as the front, in my opinion. It's not perfect. There are some misses, but overall, it it's really does give you that same pattern that we see on the front of the quilt. 
The binding was just the backing pulled around to the front. And here's another clue that this was maybe made later. Uh, you can see the color difference. Hopefully you can see that if my white balance is right. Uh, you can see the color difference from the front and the binding and backing. So that tells me this was put on later. And you know, good for them. Whoever made this, you know, for saving this quilt. I just, I love that. That's awesome that somebody actually took the time to do that. I have tons of blocks that I need to do that with <laughs> myself. So uh, as you can see, it's really cool. Um, and I hope you enjoyed looking at this quilt, taking a closer look at this quilt. It's it's so much fun to share these quilts with you. There are always so many things that these, t these quilts can teach us and it's tough sometimes for me to narrow it down to three, but I'll give it a shot. The first thing I believe this maker is trying to teach us is to use that negative space. So when we see the white areas in a quilt or just where there's nothing going on, adding a motif like this heart motif really helped this quilt just become spectacular. And uh, it wasn't perfect, it wasn't always consistent. There were some missed spots that uh, the maker didn't quilt in, but overall you can't tell unless you really get close and are looking at it like I'm looking at it to teach people about quilts. Another thing that I think is important to learn from this quilt is to use up those vintage blocks, and I have a ton of them. Honestly, the more I look at this, the more I study it, I believe this was ma made from vintage blocks because the piecing is just those little stitches are a little bit different uh, in the actual mini blocks compared to where they're sewed together. Uh, it's all hand done, but they are a little different with the variation, the angle, and exactly how they were hand pieced when I looked at it. Uh, so I believe that somebody did rescue these blocks and make it into a quilt. And lastly, the thing I think is important to learn from this maker is we sometimes get um, stressed out about marking our quilts and you can see that the marking lines are visible on this. You know what, and to, unless you look closely, you can't really tell. So, you know, I'm on the fence about this because marking quilts is, is a big deal in our world as makers. This maker obviously used, I think, a lead pencil. It did not come off. Did I notice until I started studying it? Nope, not at all, until I started really looking closely at it. So it doesn't take away from this quilt. And I think sometimes we need to remember that, that is, is this really that important, you know? Um, of course, this quilt was marked because of the motif. I mean, I don't think you could do that freehand, maybe you could, but you know, but it, it was marked with pencil. Who cares, you know? It, for me, I like now that I can see that uh, because I think it helps me understand the maker. Uh, but, eh, you know, we get hung up on stuff, but do we really need to sometimes, you know? Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed learning about this quilt as much as I love teaching it. Again, as always, thank you so much for joining me and um, going through this study of this quilt with me. I chose this quilt partially because our world is so heavy right now and so much is going on. I just felt like a little bit of brightness in the world was needed and I hope you got that from me today. Uh, so please subscribe if you haven't done so and I will see you soon. Have a great week. Take care.